Hey, 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 this is Akebono Gregory Monavis Jr. This is show number 217, recorded on July 24th, 2016. How's everybody doing? It's been uh, just a little over a month since the last podcast, and uh, just uh, had to had to get this one going. Couldn't uh, couldn't delay it any longer for you. Uh, a little quick note on today's show is going to be a little bit different because uh, E3 is going to be the big talk of today's show. It's pretty much going to dominate the uh, show. Well, we'll see how much I dominate. I might skip over a lot of crap. Um, it's a big game show. But I also got a lot of highlights for you in the recap with uh, family visiting, had a uh, Brandon High School reunion. So we're not going to be doing any of the uh, traditional... Uh, what do we call it? like our high our highlights this time uh, or, or our headlines? I should say highlights. <laughs> I don't even know my own show after 217 shows. I don't even know my own show. But uh, yeah, so we're we're gonna we're just gonna do something just a slightly off today, and then um, you know we'll, we'll we'll get back to the the normal one when I get, when I get around to the uh, next show. Uh, I already have next show um, going already as far as show notes and what I'm going to talk about because there's just, uh, there's just a whole lot going on. And, uh, part of me thinks maybe I should try to get back to doing at least two shows a month because these, uh, one month shows tend to drag out a little bit. So, uh, we'll, we'll see, we'll see how that goes and, uh, just get it figured out. Like I said, this is just one of those things that do just a fan of, uh, doing a podcast, uh, Anyone knows me knows that uh, I love to talk, <laughs> maybe a little too much. So this is your way for pausing me or turning the volume down since I have such a uh, projecting loud voice, which I get reminded of all the time. And it, it cracks me up because I'm like, I don't think I'm that loud, but uh, <laughs> apparently I am. So anyway, so let's jump into the recap. I um, had my uncle and aunt visit from uh, West Virginia, West by God, Virginia. And they were here for uh, almost uh, two weeks, so I uh, spent, a, spent a lot of time with them. And uh, I tell you, the advantage of working home and only living two minutes from my adopted parents' house uh, definitely uh, makes a difference as far as uh, spending some quality time together. And, uh, you know, we were, we were talking about the, um, what we're going to do, what we're planning, because I just had uh, went up there back in May up to West Virginia and uh, one of the big highlights that we're going to do is go see Blue Man Group. And yes, 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 I know. Uh, Blue Man Group again, right, Greg? Uh, how many times have you seen it? Uh, I think this was the 13th show um, I've seen now. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of a groupie, huh? <laughs> so, uh, so, yeah, we, we went. Uh, in, and it, if you've never seen Blue Man, it's hard to explain. I, I just... I say take the chance and go. I, I only can tell you, obviously, being a, a super fan, that uh, that it's worth it, and I never tire of it. So, but again, it was just hard to explain. So my uncle was a little skeptical about it, but uh, we, we we got in our car and we uh, convoyed off to um, off to Orlando and uh, met up. Uh, I actually met up with uh, with them uh, later. They got they got there ahead of time. I had to wait to get off of work and had to wait for my sister-in-law. So her and I drove together and we don't we don't get to spend too much time together my sister-in-law and I. So it was it was great just uh, hanging out with her and just uh, talking over stuff on our little hour drive up up there. But we ate at my favorite restaurant in the world, of course, Hard Rock uh, Cafe and met up with them in the uh, in the back and had a had a great dinner and then I went went to go see the show and without spoiling or telling you too much about it again fantastic delivery great show and my uncle and aunt were completely impressed and and he he, he thanked me for uh for uh saying you know uh for pretty much introducing a unique show that uh he had never heard i mean he've heard of it but you know you just you know, like most people, they 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 see the commercials back from the late '90s with the uh, they called them the Intel guys, but they really weren't the Intel guys. They were they were Blue Man Group, and uh, they formed in the early '90s in New York City and expanded it since then. I always get asked, "Is it the same Blue Man?" No, 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 no. There's there's dozens and dozens and and dozens of them. Um, I hear that the original guys are based out of Orlando and once in a while were would perform. Um, I'm such a fan that. If they were up there, I would know. I know their, I know their faces, but uh, the, it wasn't, it wasn't the original guys. Most of the time, they don't perform anymore. They just uh, pretty much uh, keep, uh, 
keep the business running. So had a had a good time there, and uh, we went off to Kennedy Space Center a few days a few days after that, and uh, went to go see the. Uh, um, Space Shuttle Atlantis, of course, that was there. I haven't been to Kennedy Space Center in probably like uh, ten years. Um, so they, they so they did update a lot of stuff since I had last been. We got on the um, we did we did the whole uh, um, the whole bus tour. But when we went initially to the uh, Shuttle Atlantis Museum, the uh, the video had uh, broke down, and um, they they said you can actually pass through and just go see the shuttle, but. Uh, I was told that from someone who's been there before. It's actually cool to watch the video and then um, and then go see the space shuttle land. So we, so we said we'll come back later. So we popped around a couple of museums. They had the whole rocket park where where a lot of the original rockets are are uh, are placed, uh, the original models and stuff like that. And then uh, we got on the bus tour. And the bus I've been on the bus tour before, but this bus tour was cool because they actually took us to different places. So they took us around the vehicle assembly building, which they always do. They pointed out how they're they're redoing the big um, – manu- I forgot what they call the things. I feel embarrassed because I'm actually a big NASA fan. But the but, but the big rover that actually hauled the space shuttle at a mile and a half down to the – down to the launch pads. Well, they're re they're already working on the new construction of it because they're redoing it for this space launch system, which is going to be the next big thing from NASA, the next biggest rocket, which they plan on uh, doing a flight test, I think, next year. But either way, it was nice to see actual progression working on it. And uh, they had one of the doors open at the vehicle assembly building where they assemble all the rockets. Um, didn't see anything in there. I was hoping to see maybe a mock-up of the SLS, but uh, n- nothing there but what was cool is that they actually took us out to the launch pads where the space shuttle took off and the reason i think they were able to do that is because they're not active right now so since the shuttle got retired they launched at 39 alpha 39 bravo i believe were the or the actual designations um one is being leased over to uh, spacex because they're going to launch one of their um rockets there they're working on the dragon heavy which is going to be the biggest uh man-made rocket um up to this point and especially since it's a you know pseudo private industry it's a pretty big deal for them and then they're redoing the launch pad 39 bravo for the um from the SLS so they won't utilize uh, two launch pads anymore i guess for the uh, SLS program but it was really cool to be, be right like right out there we couldn't get off the bus or anything like that but to, you know to growing up and seeing all the space shuttles take off from TV or going outside in the schoolyard because you can you can literally see rockets take off here from the west coast of florida i mean that's how that's how powerful these things um are. And then uh, we went over to uh, the, the the bus took us over to the Saturn V Museum. Uh, n- nothing new there. I've been I had been there before, but it's really cool if you're a Apollo fan, Saturn V fan. You know the rocket that took man to the moon. Very very cool um, demos they had in there. They actually had a uh, an actual Saturn V that they didn't use um, on its side. Just just massive 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 but uh but yeah really 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 cool and then as we were as we got on the tour bus to head back to the main area um the bus driver pointed out that um there was an alligator in the pond and the people on the bus just ooh snapping and taking pictures leaning over wanting to look and my sister and I are cracking up because we're like we're surrounded here by billions of dollars in literal rocket equipment and everyone has been pretty calm on this tour but as soon as they point out an alligator everyone starts freaking out and wants to take a picture of it yeah, it's like uh, you know i guess growing up in this state maybe take it for granted besides i'm not a you know i don't want to sit there and say oh i'm a big fan of gators especially with what recently happened at disney world because this just happened after that but uh but yeah they just yeah you know one of those pretty funny things that uh <laughs> that happened while we're out there and then we, we we got back to the main area and then um took another chance to go see uh space shuttle atlantis and they did this big movie the movie was working this time they did a big movie presentation um for um the space shuttle and the history of it and how it started i mean it started before we even landed a a man on the moon they're already working on the designs and everything but very dramatic uh, opening because as soon as the video faded the screen moved up and boom there's spatial atlantis right there um 
on its side with the cargo bay doors open. What what an awesome sight. And I feel so gifted and privileged now to have seen at least three shuttles in person. And uh, Shuttle Atlantis makes the uh, makes the third one uh, because just recently in May saw Space Shuttle Discovery up in um, up in Virginia at the Annex, the Space and Annex, Space Air and Space Annex Museum, and then uh, had seen Space Shuttle Enterprise at the same museum before that they actually moved out to New York. So the only space shuttle that's eluded me now is. Um, uh, Endeavor, which is out in California, but I'm sure when I get out there, I'll make a I'll make a point to go see uh, go go see her as well. But very very cool museum that they put together for the shuttle. Um, all the history they had a mock up of the Hubble telescope in there, which just is massive. Um, uh, one part that really moved me was the uh, memorial to the Columbia and the Challenger crew. Uh, they had shadow boxes set up of every astronaut that, of course, they, they lost their lives, and trinkets and things that were personal to them and a write-up of them. They actually had a piece of fuselage of Challenger and Columbia in there, which, uh, you know, it, to me, it kind of hit me. Um, I'm not going to sit there and say I cried or anything like that, but uh, it was very moving because the shuttle, I, I grew up as a fan of the shuttle. I mean, I was in seventh grade when, when Challenger um, exploded on takeoff, and I'll never forget walking into my pre-algebra class, Miss Jimenez. She had the uh, she had the TV on, and it was just like jaw-dropping. I was uh, 12 years old, I believe, when that happened, 1986. Um, so uh, I've just always felt like, you know, part of the shuttle just it's just one of those things one of just those local things i i i grew up with so it was it was very moving um but the but the museum was you know mainly about space shuttle atlantis it was a museum for it uh it was cool they had all the uh the all the uh shuttle um mission patches for for atlantis and had pictures of course of, of all the shuttles and how many missions they actually performed and everything like that so really really uh really really uh fun really really cool i i, I think it's uh i think it's worth seeing and then we had uh, held out after that and grabbed some dinner and then uh head back to the house uh we went on a um a few days uh probably well actually the next weekend because like throughout the week they were doing their stuff and uh, i'd meet up with them and just hang up hang out at the house but the uh, next week week weekend we went out to uh tarpon springs and uh to do a dolphin tour but uh i almost felt like uh jeff goldblum from jurassic park where he says uh you know excuse me are you gonna actually see any dinosaurs on this ride um and that's what happened on the dolphin tour. We didn't see a single one. I, I was skeptical about seeing dolphins because, to me, they're wild animals. You're out there in the wild. What's, you know, the the chances is hit or miss. It's just you've got to be lucky. Um, I think the best site for viewing dolphins is out at Fort DeSoto Park. Uh, I've seen more dolphins out there than any other place. So growing up on boats around here, I was like, you know, I've never been on a dolphin tour. What's What's the big deal? But. You know, how, how are we actually do they, do they have a congregation area? But no, it was not not like that at all. They uh, they filled in. They did fill in time by having you stop off at an island out there and just pick up some shells and took some pictures like that. But no, not didn't see a single dolphin. <laughs> so uh, and then uh, we got back to uh, got back to the Tarpon Springs area. Of course, I had a, had a had a delicious Greek dinner and uh, enjoyed that. And um uh, my uncle gave me some golf lessons. Never had golf lessons in my life. Um, so it was nice to get some adjustments and uh, change some things up. And I've actually been getting out to the range. And uh, I don't want to say I'm getting any better, but, you know, practice like everything. You got you to gotta keep keep doing it. I just want to improve my game a little bit like that. And uh, we tried out the Copper Tail Brewery in, uh, near Ybor City. Pretty cool. Micro brew, craft brew, whatever you want to call it. We're just... Uh, we are just teaming up with uh, building up microbrews all over Tampa. Apparently, we got rated one of the uh, number one spots for that in the um, in the country for uh, for craft brew. So that's pretty cool. So uh, you know, said goodbye to my aunt and uncle, and uh, next day. Uh, they, they, they made it back safely, made it back to West Virginia. Next day, my uncle's already, uh, talking about booking me a trip in September to go back to West Virginia to watch a football game, and that is already said so yep heading off to um west virginia at the uh at the end of uh september now moving into the uh 25th high school reunion yep uh, brandon high school class of 91 25th uh 
reunion and uh, had a uh, classmate put to uh, put together the uh, the whole thing. And that's 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 the beauty of social media. So much easier to uh, get a hold of people and get in contact with anybody. So uh, we uh, the the plan was to meet up at uh, the Brooks in uh, Ebor, and I'd, I'd been there before, uh, ate lunch there actually a few times, pretty pretty decent food, so I was hungry, I got there I got there a little early and uh, had, a, had a beer and uh, got got some dinner, and then they uh, had the, uh, uh, they had a room set up in the, um, in the back, and uh, e- even though I thought I would be um, a little uh, late, I was actually the first one there, which is, which was uh, funny. <laughs> I mean, I'm always, I'm, um, anyone who knows me knows I'm, I'm about being punctual, but you know, the parties, you never show up to a party on time. Right. So I I thought I was a little late and, uh, nope, I was the first there (laughs) and met two ladies that was working there. Turned out they weren't in my class, but because I was, let's say, I thought they looked a little young, but you know, you never, you never tell a, you never be be a gentleman, never tell a lady what what they think their age is or anything, unless you're going to lie and tell them that they look a a lot younger. But, uh, I I thought they looked a little young and they turned out to be the, uh, organizers, uh, roommates who got there early. So I I just hung out until the organizer showed up and, uh, they, they put together, uh, she put together a, a great room. She had a bunch of pictures laid out all black and white of the 20th reunion, which I had missed. I had every intention of being there and then my cousin ended up getting married the same weekend i was like oh man and uh but uh, you know stuff like that happens so i was like god i've got to make it to the 25 so had, had pictures strung out from the 20th and had pictures strung out from um i guess her personal photos from from back in the day I, I, some of them you could tell were also uh yearbook pictures i had submitted some pictures to her as well that were uh from the um or or from the from the yearbook but just really cool to see that she had a couple t-shirts um up there from back in the day like we had a senior class high school t-shirt those those things are long gone and then one of those um one of those big uh gym photos of us taking the 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 goofy photos the class of 91 i could not find myself in the picture i i thought i might have seen it but a lot of like arms were in people's faces and stuff so i might have uh gotten covered up uh what else was uh what what else was in there oh calendar couples Uh, we had this thing a competition you didn't you didn't have to actually be a couple you can do it with the friend you can have it with your honey you could do brother and sister have done it just the cutest looking couples it was a little competition that they put together and then the top 12 were actually put into a calendar that you can purchase and you know help help the boosters and everything like that so uh so yeah just for you know and a big picture laid out but you know kind of looking like a polaroid so we can we can take pictures in there um unfortunately i couldn't get great pictures of because of the the cropping because once everyone started showing up it was uh it was it was hard to crop the pictures in the, the the right way but i was kind of like the unofficial photographer but uh the organizer got there and uh we we, we got ourselves reacquainted because we just been um uh chatting uh via facebook and everything like that and I, I tell you i was eager to go and nervous and um had my reservations because when i looked at the list of people who were committed to come I wasn't particularly close to any of them. Maybe one that I knew known since like elementary school, but we weren't we were buddies, but it wasn't like best of friends. I I tried to convince my best friend to come, but he didn't want to. <laughs> but I tell you what, all of it didn't matter because it was just you know we 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 shared something for for three years, um, and we reacquainted ourselves and talked of things i i even got in contact with somebody or not contact uh, another lady that showed up there that we went back since the seventh grade and uh i really just wanted to see these people and and i tell you even even though i can't say i was the closest of friends with them back in the day i just made a bunch of new friends this time and it was absolutely great i i just had the had the time time of my life and even meeting some of the uh, significant others were great um there was at least three high school sweethearts there which i thought was like wow that's that's cool you know good good for you you know you you, you know you, you don't hear much of the high school sweetheart thing anymore so 25 years later uh you know we got we got three of them that were uh together so just uh 
it, it was all n- nothing formal, casual, just just hanging out, talking, getting to know each other, talking about old stories, talking about new stories, catching up, and uh, every everything faded off around midnight. We we had planned on doing a two day, but it didn't work out that time. But I, I I tell you, I was I was truly grateful to the to the organizer for her putting it together. Our our president went MIA. Usually it's the task of the president to organize reunions, but uh, she she took the bull by the horns and uh, and, and led. And uh, I hope she was able to recoup some of her costs because she, she had put together a Saturday night thing that faded out and had some money for a deposit. So uh, I, I, I put in a little extra to help her out, and uh, I hope I – hope, uh, Hope it worked out, but either way, if if anyone from from the class of ninety one is listening to this, it was uh, it was great seeing you. And you know, let's 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 keep in touch. You know, where uh, there's there's no excuse not to keep in touch anymore. It doesn't even always have to be necessarily a phone call. Drop a like or comment on Facebook. I mean, most of us are on that. <laughs> you know, where you know we we do the social media things. So. Uh, you know, it was a it was a great time, and uh, I hope I hope we uh, you know continue on with the friendships and uh, look forward to do to a, a thirty year uh, reunion since that's a bigger number. But I mean, just wow, twenty twenty five years ago that's uh, that's crazy. You know, you're getting old when you can talk about something twenty five years ago. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like lately they've been doing all these anniversaries of. Uh, movies that i loved and i mean i think like the goonies just hit the 30th anniversary i'm like oh my gosh 30 years that's that's crazy so anyways uh good to see everybody and uh go eagles news items in pop culture i guess nintendo classic can go on this well since i'm not really doing a formal uh tech news today and uh, this did not come out at e3 this was just announced the other day so if you remember the nintendo classic i'm sure most of you either owned one or played one came out back in 1985 well nintendo's doing a little bit of a, a nostalgia trip i mean first of all you know everyone's playing pokemon go i mean i'm not <laughs> I am not, but uh, Nintendo made an announcement that they're going to not launch a old slash new console called the Nintendo a- Entertainment System Classic Edition. It's going to come out on November 11th, and it comes pre-installed with 30 classic Nintendo games, including Mario Brothers, of course, and Zelda, Metroid, Donkey Kong. I'll, I'll get to the whole list here in a second, but it's a nod back to 1983. No cartridges in it. It's just all built in on a RAM chip somewhere that I'm sure, but it, it looks just like the Nintendo Classic. Uh, the, the the tray does not open up, so you cannot throw a cartridge in there. It's a lot smaller. The controller is, is exactly the same size, and you can buy a second controller for 10 bucks. It does come with a controller, but 60 bucks will get you the game system and the controller. Um, you can also connect the controllers to a Wii remote, so if you've got the, the Wii laying around um, or... If you still play it, some people actually still play the Wii. Um, you can hook it up to it as well. So pretty cool. I'm 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 planning on getting into this, but of course, modern connections, HDMI, and it'll you know um, it'll it'll be in high res, even though it'll be high res classic or high res old res. I don't I don't know that you know that'll all work on our HD TVs. But anyways, here's here's the list of games. Is it'll come and you can't upgrade it. They've already been asked about that. Can you can you add more games later, maybe? Um, which is a shame because this day and age, you know, you should be you, you know, it's it's not too hard to put that kind of functionality into it. Um, but I'm sure they'll have the classic edition to all the games that didn't make this list. That I'm sure people will complain about and inquire about and say, hey, you know, why don't you do another one? And hey, it's another one, another way for them to make sixty bucks, right? <laughs> so. Here is the list. Uh, Balloon Fight, Bubble Bobble, Castlevania, Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Double Dragon 2 Revenge, Dr. Mario, Excite Bike, Final Fantasy, Galaga, A Ghost and Goblins, Gradius, Ice Climber, Kid Icarus, Kirby's Adventure, Mario Brothers, Mega Man 2, Metroid, Ninja Gaiden, Pac-Man, Punch-Out, featuring Mr. Dream. Couldn't do, uh, can't do Mike Tyson anymore because that was a limited time license. Uh, Super Tropics, Super C, and then Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 2, Super Mario 3. So the big the big original there. Uh, Tech Mobile, The Legend of Zelda, and then Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. So those are the uh, list of games that will be available for it. And I, I think it's actually a pretty good list. I mean, I'm partial to Donkey Kong. Kong 3, it didn't make the list, but, you know, uh, I can see them coming out with Classic Edition Part 2, you know, another way to sucker our money in. 
Um, so either way, pretty cool. It'll be it'll be fun to have that. I still have my old Nintendo somewhere. I just can't find it. As a matter of fact, I've been scouring for it in my house. It's somewhere in this museum of of junk I've got in my house, but just can't seem to find it right now. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child movie. Um, this is a. Could it be a movie? Don't know. Uh, there's been rumors going around that the upcoming um, uh, play slash that that's happening out, I think, in London right now could actually. And then there's a book coming out of this. It's supposed to take place like 20 years later after um, after the Deathly Hollow series. Of course, I'm a big Harry Potter fan. Read all the books. Re- reading through it a second time. Seen the movie more times than I can count. Anyways, this movie is based on one of Harry's kids 20 years after uh, Deathly Hollows. And the reason why the rumors are swirling, because Daniel Radcliffe said he would absolutely be up for playing Harry Potter again. And um, I'd be down for it. So could there be a movie? I mean, the Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is coming out this November. It is a spinoff in the Harry Potter world. I shouldn't even say Harry Potter world. It's the wizarding world. Harry Potter won't be in it. Rumors that Dumbledore might have a cameo. But uh, we'll, we'll see. And and this... this uh, um, Harry Potter spinoff is going to be taking place in America. So there's going to be the introduction of the American version of Hogwarts. It's not necessarily based on the school, this story. Matter of fact, I don't know too much about Fantastic Beasts or where to find them, but all these rumors swirling around. I look at it this way. You know, just go ahead and take my money. Um, <laughs> it, it's such a big world, and to just cut it off after seven books and saying that's it. There's there's more to the world, kind of like Star Wars is doing now. You get the funding behind it. People people like myself will go see it, buy the books, you name it. So that uh, that might happen. Uh, what else is going on here? Um, this new Star Trek movie just came out, so I'm hoping to have a uh, movie review for you in the next podcast. Haven't um, haven't seen that quite yet. Um, but Anton Yelchin, who tragically passed away, who played. Ch- check off um, right now will not be recast. I mean, they're going to move forward with another Star Trek movie, of course, but J.J. Uh, Abrams says he's, he's an executive producer. They are not pr- they're not planning on um, on recasting him, and I, I think that's a good move. I, you, you, you can't replace some actors that just have such a prominent role part of the cast and uh, San Diego Comic Cons this weekend so talking about showing off a lot of stuff I won't bore, bore you too much with all the details because I haven't really checked but basically the Justice League trailer and the Wonder Woman trailer were showed off there in incredible looking for you so i have uh, links below for you on that if you're a comic book geek nerd you know fan <laughs> check those out uh, you will not be disappointed <laughs> Movie review, Finding Dory. So this is a uh, follow-up sequel. Gosh, what, 2003, 2004? I don't know. It seems like sometimes it takes a while for a sequel to come out. But uh, anyways, been looking forward to uh, seeing this. So premise is Finding Dory reunites the friendly but forgetful blue tang fish with their loved ones. And everyone learns a few things about the true meaning of family along the way. The all-new big screen adventure. Um, dives into theaters, taking moviegoers back to an extraordinary underwater world from the original film. Rated PG for mild thematic elements. Didn't even realize it was rated PG. I thought it'd be rated G, but anyways, PG. Interesting. Uh, animation genre, of course, and running time of 100 minutes. And uh, let me see. Before we get into the reviews uh, or, or the uh, the actual ratings, um, I was looking forward to seeing this movie, my, my little take on it, and the intro movie. Okay. The movie was great. Don't get me wrong. I enjoyed it. Very funny. A lot of humor. Good story. Good, you know, good everything. And uh, animation was on top. Uh, just top notch. Just, uh, just like the original Finding Nemo and most of the Pixar um, films. But... Uh, what impressed me was the introduction movie. There's a 10-minute short that starts before the movie, and I was told by friends, if anything, it's worth to go see it itself. It is about a bird that is learning how to um, use the beach, the surf, to eat clams. The thing about it was, it's just one of those cute little videos the thing about it was the animation did not look like animation until they got in close to the character. The Like the opening scene was on the beach, like a close-up ground camera, and it looked real. And a lot of the scenes in it looked real, even though it was completely CG, computer-generated. 
I think Pixar was showing off what's going to be the next step in computer generated animation. I'm truly incredible the grain and the pebbles and the sand you can see all the different colors and grit and size in the water the foam the the waves just unbelievable unbelievable so anyways the movie was great was funny i don't spoil so i don't want to tell you much about it but let's talk about the ratings real quick the critics have given it an a the peeps have given it a b plus me i'm going to give it an a minus good follow-up i don't see there being a third movie out of this if they do then they're Truly milking it, but uh, fun adventure, and uh, really enjoyed seeing that at the theater. E3 recap. All right, so if uh, you are a video gamer, if you love video games, and this section is for you. If not, uh, you know, you can skip towards the end of the show, Son of the Week, well, you know, whatever you do. Right? That's uh, completely up to you. I'm, I'm, I'm here to try to entertain you the best best possibly way I can. But anyway, so this whole section is going to be about video games. But uh, so E3, if in case of those of you don't know, is one of the biggest gaming conventions that happen in the world every year. And I'm just going to touch on some highlights, not going to go into any big dig details. I mean, if any games like stand out that are cool, I mean, I know some of you are, um, are, 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 are gamers like myself. I, I don't want to call myself a diehard gamer because I go through my phases where I just play the heck out of a video game and then I won't play anything for a while. But uh, so, this, so every, not every, but a lot of the companies have their own press conferences. So um, that's pretty much what I'm going to be covering over in the, each individual one and what, what they did. So let's start with Bethesda, Adam Sessler and Morgan Webb hosted the Bree game show. They used to um, host a video game show, which I love. So it was great to see those back together. Um, showed off Quake. So if you're a fan of Quake, one of the awesome first-person shooters from the 90s of, is coming back. Um, looks like just for the PC right now. Uh, long hiatus. I think it's been like 20 years since a, since a Quake game actually came out. So that's that's crazy. Crazy. Um, Elder Scrolls Online, they showed off. And um, showing some beta, Fallout 4. And uh, let me see what else do they they cover. Oh, if you're a f uh, Elder Scrolls Five, um, they're going to convert that to PS4 and Xbox One, so a remaster um, edition. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let me see. Also covered a game called Prey, first person shooter. Looks like a like a space Halo type of game. And uh, Doom, uh, snap maps where you can create levels and use props or anything like that. So Doom just came out this year. And then uh, Elder Scrolls Online, they're going to have more content online about some Dark Brother pack. I don't know what anything like that. And then they showed off a virtual reality, which you could actually play at the conference. So you'll be able to play um, up here in the near future on the HEC Vive platform, Doom and Fallout 4. So uh, if you want to give VR a chance... It's been talked about for years, and we finally actually have some products available. I am not going to buy into the whole VR right away. Uh, I'm just going to see what happens with the industry. I think it's a cool technology, um, but it's been around for a while. It's just never taken off. I mean, Disney Quest down at uh, Downtown Disney, a.k.a. Disney Springs now, has had a lot of VR games for a while and pretty good quality. Um differences is at your house but a lot of the vr sets are expensive they cost as much maybe even more than a game console so it's a cost that's going to affect people the reason why i'm holding back is because a i don't want to spend that kind of money b um i was a huge fan of connect on xbox 360 and it came over to the xbox one even more sensitive more accurate less delay and it never took off. And it's just such a shame because Connect was a lot of fun. It wasn't virtual reality. It would track your body motions. You'd use your body to play a video game. And you could get on a pretty good sweat with uh, with uh, Connect. So, you know, we'll, uh, we'll hold off on that. Uh, Microsoft showed off the new Xbox One S, which is going to be white, smaller, 40% smaller, I should say, slimmer. And uh, the integrated power supply, so no longer brick on the outside. It's going to be able to do HDR gaming and 4K video in Blu-ray. So if you've been, um, if you're not familiar with what all that is, the next step beyond HD TV is called high, ultra high definition TV or 4K. Same same difference. Um, they're actually have already started release Blu-ray discs that can support 4K um, or ultra high def, and 
it this new Xbox One will be able to play that. And so for $299 at the starting price, it's a pretty good deal because a lot of the uh, 4K Blu-rays cost around 500 But just think of even a sharper picture compared to your high def. And I know everyone's already like, my high def looks great. And it does. High def is awesome. But imagine something of a little more. As a tech geek, um, I enjoy it. I have a 4K TV. Unfortunately, there's no actually good any 4k content out there right now well this is the first step and because internet speeds cannot keep up with 4k netflix has a 4k but it's not a true 4k it's very compressed it's still grainy 4k should never be grainy um it should look like you're looking outside of a window this is the first step in the direction and that's where they believe discs will actually have a small comeback because they your internet provider cannot stream that kind of content right now, at least not natively, without compressing it. Whereas on a disc, it's going to look look like in its purest form. So another console, but all your Xbox games will work on it. So there's no, you know, it's not a even a backwards compatibility thing. You, you, you either choose or not choose to buy the Xbox One. What you're going to miss out by not getting it is that if you have a 4K TV, it's just the video that is not going to... Uh, I mean, the video will be 4K. The games aren't 4K, but the videos are 4K. If you, you get what I'm saying. Uh, Gears of War 4, they showed off that. They were really big on showing off um, Xbox Play Anywhere. So basically, if you buy a digital download of an Xbox One game, you can also play it on your PC. So you can take it anywhere with you. Cross-play. So that's pretty cool. Uh, showed off Killer Instinct, a uh, new racing game. Oh, Killer Instinct, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself, is a, is a fighting game. Uh, Forza Horizon 3, which is a uh, racing game. Beautiful natural scenes. It uh, looks like it's going to be all in Australia. Exclusive for Xbox One only. Final Fantasy 15. they showed off. More expansion packs for uh, The Division. Uh, showing off Battlefield 1, a uh, big cinematic trailer, World War II base style type of game. And then some more features coming to Xbox One Live, like you can play background music. Um, Cortana will now be available if you still have a Connect or a headset. You can use Cortana to Cortana to ask questions. Um, clubs, which will create a pretty cool community. Yeah, so you can expand on your Xbox uh, friends list or if you're looking for a group. So I'm hoping like the one of the gamer forms I'm part of will create a club. So we'll all be a part of it and we can find each other. And arena mode where you can have like a tournament set up tournament platforms because that's a big that's a big thing out there right now uh minecraft uh coming out we'll play on ios android and uh xbox windows 10 also using the oculus rift um for minecraft so uh pretty pretty cool new controller for xbox you can design customize color you know you 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 name it inside from the creators of limbo another side scrolling puzzle game looks pretty, actually pretty cool uh what else here blah 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 tekken 7 dead rising if you're into that you know just keep keep on going on and on and on just a, a huge huge thing and then at the end of the uh uh, conference they announced project scorpio so this is another xbox one game console coming out next year but will support true 4k ultra high def game gaming so the xbox one s next month is just for 4k video this will be for 4k gaming so taken in another direction um being touted as one of the most powerful consoles ever built it's gonna have eight cpus in it um, 320 um, gig bandwidth, which is capable of six teraflops of GPU. I know that's all techie stuff. Comes out holiday 2017. But once again, which is cool, any Xbox One game will play on any Xbox One console. So it doesn't matter if you have the original Xbox One. Doesn't matter if you have Xbox One um, S, which comes out next month, or the X1 Scorpio. Your game will play in any system which is actually pretty smart so they're not forcing you to upgrade if you want a little better graphics a little better 4k video it's a choice and you know that's what's love about the free market you can go out there and buy one and have all your games still work you do not have to replace your library so really cool all right moving on to playstation's conference showed off some game called abzu some underwater cartoon scuba diving looking game pretty cool um, a lot of cartoon looking games bound another one uh kind of weird uh let me see gods of war this will be pretty big deal for people who uh 
who are God of War fans, is going to focus on um, Kratos' kid. And he's looking a little older in this, but still kick butt. Lifelike looking graphics, though. Um, in, incredible. Uh, let me see. They talked about Days Gone, The Last Guardian, some kind of caveman looking game, I think, something like that. Um, Resident Evil 7, uh, using the virtual reality. Oh, Pretty cool. Uh, announcing per PlayStation Virtual Reality will cost $399. Comes out October 13th, and 50 games are already supported for it. So that was the biggest holdback with VR. People are like, are there going to be any games for it? Well, Sony is uh, aggressively pushing VR. So if you want to take a chance with virtual reality, um, there'll be 50 games that will be available that you can uh, play for it. Showed off a little Battlefront. We talked about that before, but just showing off different uh, modes like that. Um, let me see, D -d 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 Batman playing that in VR, cool, Final Fantasy in VR, um, new Call of Duty called Infinite Warfare, um, just a new, just another series on the Call of Duty, you know, Modern Warfare being remastered on it, which looks cool, and then pra Crash Bandicoot from the original PlayStation's coming back, uh, remastered as well, it showed off some Lego Force Awakens, and then um, Spider-Man, just a pre preview trailer, but uh, New York City, impressive looking gameplay was was very, very, very uh, interested in uh, in in seeing more more of that video game. Uh, let me see. Going on to the conference for Ubisoft. If you're a fan of Just Dance, Just Dance 2017 is coming out. So get your dance on and, and, and while playing a video game. Uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. It's a open open world game. One of the first for the uh, Tom Clancy series. I'm a big fan of uh, of uh, of Ghost Recon, so looking forward to that. Um, South Park. They actually had Trey, another game ca called from South Park. Uh, Trey Parker, Matt Stone, the original creators came of it, came out and uh, inter introduced the game. Uh, graphics, of course, look exactly like the cartoon, which is pretty cool. But th the the title of the game is called South Park, The Fractured But Whole. <laughs> so just let yourself uh, have some fun with that. <laughs> um, of course, uh, they had to show off a lot of their virtual reality with some eagle flight game where you chase each other around all over Paris. They had like uh, eight people playing on it. Very, very, very neat. Um, a virtual reality of called Star Trek Bridge Crew on the USS Aegis, and some of the Trek stars came back to uh, do their um, to um, lend their voice talent and and play it as well. Like Jordy and Bones and Seven and Nine were there. Um, they they felt like they were actually on the bridge. So you command a starship. Very cool. Coming out fall twenty sixteen, and um, Lavar Burton came out on a conference later and and said how much immersive it was. He felt like he was back in in his acting mode back into playing uh playing uh Jordy LaForge. So skipping, skipping, skipping here. Assassin's Creed, of course they had to show off that. Uh but let's move on to EA. EA is gonna show off Titanfall two. Uh um and now it's coming to PS4 because I guess it was a Xbox One exclusive before. So if you're a fan of Titanfall coming coming to PS4 as well. Madden seventeen, wow lifelike graphics, new commentary on the team, three levels of completion, um, just incredible, incredible looking game. Same thing with uh, FIFA 17, The Journey, which is a uh, soccer game. EA Star Wars, um, showing off some new maps, new heroes, uh, stuff like that. And, of course, they had to show off a little more of uh, Battlefield 1. It seems like every, every conference is doing Battlefield 1. <laughs> it's just showing off a lot of that. Um, and then moving on to Nintendo, they showed off a new Zelda game called The Breath of the Wild Fire, um, cartoon-looking like graphics, and then a Pokemon game called Sun and Moon, which comes out on the DS. And uh, um, to me, that was the biggest uh, disappointment of the E3 conferences when it's Nintendo. They showed off two entire games. I mean, seriously? <laughs> I just, I don't know how you're, but somehow they stay relevant. You know, I don't know how you stay relevant with you, the biggest gaming conference in the world, and all you do is show off two games. Now, great, granted, they didn't say anything about Pokemon Go, which has helped their stocks big time. Something like nine billion dollars they made off of um, off of uh, the Pokemon Go app, 
and that's the rumor with Nintendo anyways are going to go mobile because the, m- my biggest criticism with Nintendo is it's all about they're a character based company so if you like the characters that they own the Mario the Kirby's the the Pokemon the Yoshi's the Zelda you can continue to keep playing sequel after sequel after sequel and, and uh, granted the other consoles have it with Halo and you know Gears of War and God of War but there's not 30 Halo games there's like 5 right now you know I I just feel like more quality is put into those games versus what Nintendo has. But Nintendo is all about simple, fun gameplay, and that's what keeps them relevant. And uh, I thought they would have showed off their new console. They were rumoring to have a new console called the NX, but they didn't. Rumors are going to show that off at the Tokyo Game Show. And even PlayStation, Sony, there is rumors that they're going to have a 4K edition of PlayStation coming out. They didn't talk about that either. So the Tokyo Game Show is happening in August, so I'll have some updates for that in the tech review section of what those consoles will uh be about hopefully we'll hear more and the the reason why they they guess they weren't ready to uh show those off yet so uh so yeah that that'll go ahead and um wrap up all the all the talking points of uh today's podcast that i wanted to cover for you not not nearly as long a show as uh previous ones but uh i was worried that I could have done just an hour just on E3, and I didn't want to go <laughs> that deep into it. But, uh, I mean, I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, quick, quick recap over it. I mean, it was an entire week that I just gave you there in, like, five minutes. <laughs> so that'll go ahead and um, get us to the final part of the show. No Geek Talk this week. Like I said, I'm abbreviated, or this week, this month. I'm, I'm still saying this week because I, I used to do these shows every week, which is crazy. But, no, this month. No, no, uh, no geek talk this this show, and uh, we're gonna get to the final part of the show, um, the song of the show called Saint Elmo's Fire. Um, I just always associated with this with nostalgia. Um, I'm sure it was almost most people's high school theme songs. I don't know if it was officially our high school theme song, but it makes me think of high school. It makes me think of the you know the late '80s and early '90s when I went to high school. So I think it's a, a good way to uh, finish off the. Uh, show and no no after show either so um anyways uh let's see what else uh show announcements i'm not on twitter anymore i really didn't have that many followers and really wasn't using it that much so i've deleted my twitter account i'm just gonna stick with uh facebook but um if you do have any comments on the show please send me a, an email at akibona radio at gmail.com that is listed on my website as well and um, I'll get the YouTube um, edition posted here in the next uh, couple of days as well. Those of you who like listening ver- via YouTube, it's the same exact show. No videos or anything, just just the podcast with the uh, static image of Al- Akibono Radio um, posted behind it. So um, once again, it was great seeing everyone at the uh, Brandon High Class class of 91 25th reunion of those of you who listened through this entire show <laughs> listening to my babble but I, I really had a wonderful time and uh i don't drop any names uh, on the show i i guess i did with my my pre-algebra teacher from seventh grade but uh, anyone current right now no no game uh, no no names are are dropped but uh, i want to thank the organizer um for putting putting it together uh, she did a fantastic job and i had the, one of the greatest times of my life i really did and looking forward to seeing seeing everybody uh again here very soon and uh you know god bless so this is akabono gregory monovis jr i want to thank you for downloading and listening to the show again please send me those comments send me those suggestions feedbacks i really would appreciate hearing from you letting me know how the show's going y'all take care and we will talk to you later see ya